I'm Mega, um, and I'm presenting on cluster wall bootstrapping to handle dependent effect sizes and meta analysis with a small number of studies. It is a mouthful of title, and this is this article is based on my present uh, on my dissertation that I defended last year, and the article is co-authored with James, who's been asking questions, um, and Tasha Bratva is my two co-advisors, co-chairs. So, firstly, what is what is meta analysis? A meta-analysis is a set of statistical techniques to synthesize results from multiple studies done on the same topic. And the three goals of meta-analysis include to summarize the effect size estimates across studies to come up with a, some average number, um, characterize variability in, in the effect sizes across studies, and to explain variability in the effect sizes, which is done in by meta-regression or moderate ana analysis to see if the effects of some treatment differs according to average age of the sample of the studies, for example. So typical meta-analytic techniques like meta-regression involves the assumption that effect sizes are independent. It's like the independence, it's basically the independence assumption in, in a regression model. But it's common for each primary study to yield more than one effect size, um, effect sizes, or, like, or the studies to be nested in some way creating dependence in, among the effect sizes. An example of uh, a dependent structure is in Garrett Sitkowitz and Williams 2019 paper. It's, it is a meta-analysis of randomized studies ex examining the effect of professional learning interventions for teachers on classroom practice. And this meta-analysis included primary studies with multiple outcomes measured on the same sample. And some of the multiple outcomes measured were like um, classroom practice, classroom environment, uh, uh, instruction quality. So there are multiple effect sizes per study. There are different ways to handle dependence. You can ignore it, but that's going to result in incorrect standard errors and incorrect inference from hypothesis tests. There are some ad hoc methods that people have used, uh, like randomly selecting one effect per, per study or analyzing subsets of data separately. But doing that, doing so results in loss of in information. And the ideal method is to run multivariate method, multivari multivariate model. But to run multivariate models, you need, uh, you need information on the covariance or correlation between effect sizes, which is hard to gain, gather from uh, published studies. So Hedges, Tipton, and Johnson to 2010 uh, introduced cluster robust variance estimation to be applied to meta-analysis. It does not require uh, information on the correlation or covariance uh, structure of the, uh, of the effect sizes, but it makes rough, rough, rough assumptions about the depend dependent structure using sandwich estimators. However, studies have found that it only works well, this type of CRV only works well when the number of studies is large, and Hedges, Tipton, and Johnson suggested large meaning greater than 40 studies. In social science research, Tipton 2015 and Tipton and Pusiewski 2015 have noted that over half of the studies have generally have less than 40 studies. When the number of studies is small and you use this, the CRV uh, suggested by Hedges, Tipton and Johnson, um, you, type one error can be really inflated um, and meta-analysts can, can conclude some effect is present when it's actually not. For example, in the Garrett Sikowitz Williams paper, you can conclude that the teacher professional learning programs are effective for teachers who are older, when in reality that effect does not exist. So there are two types of hypothesis tests that meta-analysts usually conduct. Um, conduct. Uh, one of them is tests of single coefficients. An example of that is that does the effect of some professional learning treatment vary depending on the average teaching experience of the samples of the teachers in the primary studies. It's just like the interpretation of the single coefficient from a regression model. And meta-analysts also often conduct multiple contrast hypothesis tests. If such tests are used to examine whether effects differ across different levels of a moderator variable. For example, uh, in, the, in the article that I've mentioned, a multiple contrast hypothesis test could examine whether teachers' professional learning programs on classroom practice differ for teachers teaching in elementary school, middle school versus high school. And the implications on multiple contrast hypothesis in terms of policy are if you, if you find that the effect, effects differ, 
And if you find effects are positive for teachers in elementary school, but null or negative for teachers in high school. So there's a difference in the effect based on the grade level. The policy implication would be to reevaluate re the programs for high school teachers and ident identify ways to make it better or curtail use of the program in the high schools. So the problem with the CR0 type CRVE suggested by Hedges, Tipton and John Johnson was that it results in high type one error inflation when the number of studies in a meta-analysis is small. Tipton 2015 and Tipton and Pusiewski 2015 examined small sample correction methods um, for a single coefficient tests and multiple contrast hypothesis tests. Um, both papers recommended a method called HCD tests, which is the same as CR2 correction, which corrects for leverage, uh, and to use the satellite degrees of freedom for sing single coefficients and, and a, an extension of that for multiple contrast hypothesis tests. Um, the studies found that the HTZ, HTZ test controls type 1 error rates adequately, but it has really low type 1 error rates, especially for multiple contrast hypothesis tests, um, indicating that the test may have low power. Tipton and Pustoyevsky did not actually study power, but the type 1 error rates were near zero for some conditions indicating that it may have low power. And uh, it might miss difference in treatment effect across grade levels when the difference actually exists. So in our study, we examined an alternative method that, have been, that has been used widely in econometrics literature, but not in meta-analytic framework. Um, bootstrapping is a technique to estimate unknown quantities by resampling from the original data many times. And cluster wild bootstrapping particularly involves resampling residuals by multiplying them by cluster, cluster level random weights. And this is the algorithm for cluster wall bootstrapping. Uh, we fit, fit a null model and a full model on the original data. The null model contains all, every variable that's not to be tested in the multiple contrast test or single coefficient test. And the full model includes all the, all the variables to be tested. Um, then obtain residuals from the null model. Then we generate an auxiliary random variable like random marker weights. Uh, and it's set to be constant within clusters. And we also studied a, studied a variant of this uh, by multiplying the residuals by CR2 matrices to correct the variance in case the working model is incorrect. And then we obtain new outcome scores by adding the transform residuals to the predicted values from the null model fit to the original data. And then we re-estimate the full model with the calculated outcome scores and obtain the test statistics. And then you re repeat these steps, um, whatever bootstrap replication times that you want to uh, run, and you calculate the p-value as the as the proportion of the test statistics that were greater than the original test statistics, and it's f in this case because for multiple contrast hypothesis tests we use f test. The research question that we examined uh, in our paper is to what extent does CWB improve upon the current standard test HTZ in terms of type 1 error rates and power? And we ran two large simulations, uh, simulations which took over 300 hours to run on a supercomputer. Um, and I'm presenting results on simulation one, but simulation two also had very similar results. The design matrix was just different uh, in, in our simulation. We compared the CWB test against the HTZ test in terms of type 1 error rates and power. And we found that CWB, the CWB test maintained type 1 error rates adequately and provided sometimes huge gains in power over the HTZ test. So this is the result for the type 1 error rates. Um, on the x-axis, you have like the CWB test, the CWB adjusted test, and the HTZ test. And on the y-axis, we have type 1 error rates. We have the number of studies to uh, simulations with 10 studies uh, 20 studies, 40 studies, 80 studies, and the number of contrasts on the, on the rows. Um, so for the green one is HTZ, and you can see that it's, it does control type 1 error rate, but once the, when the number of studies is really low and the number of contrasts is really high, the type 1 error rate is near zero. Meanwhile, uh, cluster wild bootstrapping and cluster wild bootstrapping adjusted tests, they're um, uh, they're calibrated around the type of error or around the nominal alpha of 0 0.5 for almost all conditions. It's a little bit higher for smaller, uh, smaller number of studies, but mostly like 
uh, it, it's around 0.05. And this is a result for power. We have the power of HCZ on the x-axis, uh, power of CWB on the y-axis, and the co different colors indicate the number of studies used, um, studies in the simulation. And the different facets are the number of contrasts. And the diagonal line, if dots are above the diagonal line, it means that CWB had a higher power than the HCD test. And in most conditions, most cases, that's the case that CWB had higher power. And especially for tests of higher contrast and with uh, small number of studies, it has way higher power than HCD. So uh, to conclude, um, dependent effect sizes are very common in meta-analysis and social sciences. If we ignore them, we can get incorrect standard errors and inferences. Uh, if we use RVE, the CR0 type CRVE suggested by Hedges, Tipton, Johnson, it can result in type 1 error inflation, which means false discovery rate will be high. Uh, you can use small sample corrections like the HDD test, but uh, using that results in low power, so you may miss effects that are pres present. And then if you use CWB, it balances between type and error rates and also provides more power than the existing corrections. We have preprint available in, on OSF. And we also made uh, an R package uh, that implements the algorithm for meta-analysis particularly. It's called WildMeta. Um, and we have a website for it that you can uh, that you can visit and it has code examples and all. And that's all I have. Thank you so much for attending. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you, Mega. Okay, we have a lot of time for, for questions if anyone wants to jump in. I think I posted the a link to the preprint that Mega reference in the chat. So maybe that's a that's a good place to to start if you want to learn more. <clears throat> 